doubt, son. Now I'm on the route, son. You can get beat down. Random men want a crown. If you stand your ground, they can never bring you down. I'm unbreakable. Kevin Randleman grew up in the quiet town of Sandusky, Ohio, but his life has been anything but quiet. After high school, Kevin left Sandusky for Ohio State University, where he wrestled and went on to capture two NCAA championships. Randleman grew up fighting, and to this day, he loves it. It, it means a lot to me to be in this because, again, I mean, I'm always trying to fight and I'm always trying to get better. And when you're fighting with guys and you're stable, it's a lot different than when you're getting to fight against the crow cops and the feeders and the. When you get in there against someone and they say, let's get it on, that's when you learn. You know, and you might see ring rust come off of me in the ring, but uh, I'm really excited about being here. These type of fights is what I live for. I train, wake up in the morning, go run because I want to be able to just throw punches at 15. That's what I live for. I live for everyone thinking that he's one of the greatest athletes in the sport. I won't die until, until I'm, until that, I'm not going to be satisfied. Since growing up as a young boy in Ohio, Kevin Randleman has been on a mission, a mission to survive. And in 2003, the monster almost lost his life in a tragic car accident. And I had a, I had a seizure. I had a Lexus SUV. Um, the police officer them said I had to be doing 120 because I, I seized up or whatever. Boom, hit a truck. The truck slammed on its brakes. My car got turned around because there was a guy right behind me watching it like, it was like, holy crap, dude, I can't believe you walked out that. But tore my car up, ripped the engine up. Uh, my hood of my car came right through the cab, just cut everything like butter. Came, hit me right in the head here. And when it hit me here, it bent the hood of my car, but it grooved this all out. So I had 180-some uh, stitches in this head. And when I was in the car, I, I, I woke up in the car, and I was like, I thought I was dreaming. They broke my back window because my car, it pushed me. My SUV got compacted like a Toyota car. So my engine kind of got threw up into the car on top of me, pushed me back into my back like my hatchback and that. The guy cracked my window and it kind of woke me up. And when I woke up, I, I looked out the window and I grabbed him and pulled him in and was like, what are you doing? He was like, don't worry, bro, we're going to get you out. You're going to be safe. Kevin survived, but things were still tough for the fighter, coming off two losses, one to Quentin Jackson. Oh! And the other to pride veteran Sakuraba. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Trouble. He's got it. He's got it. He got it. Wow. He got it. But recently, Randleman did the unthinkable. He knocked out pride heavyweight Mirko Krokop. A shot back up to his feet. Excellent, oh, excellent, excellent. And by Randleman, knocks down Krokop. Has Krokop on his back. It's and over, it's over, it's over. I did what my coach wanted me to do, and that was finish the job, finally. Now, the monster must face Pride's heavyweight champion, Fedor. And I'm not losing. There's only one boy from Ohio left, and, we're, and I've said it before, we're taking this belt to Ohio. I've fought big guys before. I've lost to guys, I, I, I lost to guys like a great Sakuraba and the great Quentin Jacksons when people thought I should win, and I underestimated men. And you know, when it comes to Pride, there's no way that you can say that this guy's going to win or this guy's going to win. You saw that Oko, Okoye, he fought Nogueira like a champion. So you can't ever say that this guy's going to win and this guy's going to win. It just depends on who shows up. Like today, Kevin the Monster showed up. June 20th, I guarantee you, a bigger, stronger monster's going to show up. Believe me, I want to win. But if I get knocked out with a kick that breaks my nose open and I got to get surgery, I won't give up. I'll take it. As so long as it doesn't kill me or maim me, I'll take anything. Kevin's looking to take out Fedor, just like he did to Krokop. I knew the damn right you'll see June 20. I will be bigger, I will be stronger, and I will be back with all the pride in the world.
I'm here in the dressing room uh, with Kevin, the monster rentalman. First of all, Kevin, my deepest condolences to you, and I speak through for the whole Pride people, for the whole group, the whole fans all over the world. I know they all mean it. It must have been really hard for you. Um, so tell us what, how, how did it affect you this? What, what, I mean, how can you train? How can you concentrate and focus? It's got to be really weird, really difficult. Uh, you don't. You just try and make, you know, every day you get up, there's something that's going to come your way. This is just another hurdle. It's just like the game of life, you know, you live and you die, you know, and uh, just so happens that this time it was my father, but I mean, I've lost lots of people in my family like the last couple of weeks, so it's just another one. You know, you just remember all the good times and even some of the bad times, and I just remember all the things that he taught me. Sometimes I cry and sometimes I'm just... Sometimes I catch myself laughing so hard that I just can't, I pee my pants, you know, but to all the Japanese fans and the fans from Holland and the fans from France and the Yardies from London and all my friends and family from America, you know, um, happy Father's Day to all those fa fathers. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, you can never forget those that we've lost. Just remember them and cherish the times that we had. Yeah, and the same counts for you. Happy Father's Day also, man. Thank you. You know, no matter what happens today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and I'm fighting for my father. I'm fighting for my dad. I'm fighting for my family. But right now, the, my fight, this fight is dedicated to my father. And uh, the unbreakable is no doubt. Because everything that I've ever gone through in my life, boss, no matter what it is, and you can hear it in the song, yep. I'm unbreakable. I've been unbreakable since I was a 10-year-old boy, 20-year-old man. And now I'm a 33-year-old man with a family, and I'm still unbreakable. Perfect, man. Well said. I'm going to wish you all the best tonight. Um, it's going to be a little bit of time, man, and the show is on. Um, Kevin, thanks so much for this interview, because I know it's always very difficult for fighters, you know, to get interviewed before the fight, right before the fight, but you always take the time for us. Thank you so much. Ah, thank you. Coming from the world's best-looking martial artist, <laughs> Caucasian. Caucasian. <laughs> He's the world's greatest black-looking martial That's artist. That's right. And to, uh, again, to all those in this world, uh, there's so much turmoil, so much, so much tragedy going on, but um, so long as everybody keeps their chin up, no nothing can hurt us. And everyone on this planet is unbreakable, so long as you keep it here and here. God bless you all. Theodore, you uh, suffered uh, some injuries, I understand, recently in a motor vehicle accident uh, back home in Russia. What, what kind of an accident was it? Like, was it a serious car accident? And how do you feel right now? Well, Mauro, it, it happened one day after training. Uh, I was training very hard, and I left the gym, and then I proceeded to drive home. And what happened was, while I was driving, I noticed that there was another car coming at me in my lane. And the other guy didn't give way to me, so I swerved my car out of the way, and I crashed it. But it really wasn't that serious. Fyodor, what do you have to do to make sure that uh, what happened to Mirko Krokop in the first round doesn't happen to you tonight against Kevin Randleman? Well, uh, I saw what happened uh, in the last fight with Kevin Random and how he knocked out Mirko Krokop, and uh, I was surprised on what happened last time. But uh, I'm not worried. Now is not the time to worry. Boss, when uh, this show goes down, it is Father's Day, and it is with a very heavy heart that Kevin Randleman goes into his bout against Theodore Emelianenko, having just suffered the tragic loss of his dad recently. Um, how do you think it's going to affect his mindset heading into what maybe is the most important fight of his life. You know what, I, I respect Kevin so much for this because I, nobody else in the world would have took this fight. I mean, he's gonna fight Peter, the guy who beat Mark Coleman, his mentor, and still he takes the fight. So he's got a lot of heart. That's one thing I wanna say first of all. Um, of course it affects him because he could not train. He had a lot of worries on his mind. He, of course he had to arrange the whole thing. And it's a, it's a whole thing. I, I don't know how he does it, but uh, for some reason, Randleman has a switch, and, um, and if he's on, like last time, he's on. Of course, Fyodor Emelianenko, I'm sure, sympathizes with Kevin in this uh, time of sorrow, but it is a business. Fyodor Emelianenko wants to win this fight. What does he have to do to advance to final conflict in August? I think the key to victory here for Fedor would be to come into Kevin Randleman's guard. 
But that is a very difficult task to do. I mean, on their feet, after the last show we saw with Kevin Randleman and Mirko Prokop, I think they're equally strong. I mean, Kevin can bomb and so can Fedor. But if it goes to the ground, Kevin has to make sure that he's going to land on the side mount, go to the north-south position, and then start raining those knees on the head like he did with Morello Ninja. If Fedor comes in his guard, that could be a problem. Okay, and on a personal note, I know I speak for all of our fans and everyone associated with Pride Fighting Championships when I extend our deepest condolences to Kevin Randleman and the Randleman family. Boss Rune, we uh, once again welcome for main event coverage the one and only Quentin Rampage Jackson to the broadcast. And Quentin, this is it, the main event. Yeah. A Saitama Super Arena record crowd of 43,711 about to welcome Kevin the Monster Randleman. The Monster. And uh, he is being led to the ring by the sounds of the single Unbreakable, a song written especially for him by an up and coming rapper from Flint, Michigan called Pack. His CD available on CDBaby.com. And let's listen in to Unbreakable. It's bumping. Randleman, of course, it's been well documented. The trials and tribulations that he's had to endure throughout his life. And of course, suffering a recent tragedy with the loss of his father only a couple of weeks ago. Something tells me that is going to motivate him even more than anyone knows because he is right now on some kind of a journey with that unbelievable knockout victory over Mirko. Randleman. How do you, what do you think of his mind state uh, set right now, Quentin? Randleman is a soldier. That's all I gotta say. That man's a soldier, a warrior. Yeah, that's what he has. And you know the jacket he's wearing right now, and I know because I, the people told me about it a long time ago, it's what the samurai used to wear, the really tough ones, the Shinsen Gumi. And uh, that he wants to represent, he's in the heart of a samurai, as you, my friend. Yeah. Uh, he's at the heart of a warrior of a samurai. He's being led, of course, sir. Well, not led, but being followed by uh, his mentor, his uh, teammate, Mark Coleman, who lost to his opponent tonight, Fedor Emelianenko, in round one. Wes Sims also in his corner tonight. He wants to say a special hello to his son, Calvin, and his daughter, Jasmine, at home, waiting for their father to return, and hopefully, with a fitting victory here on Father's Day. Yeah, and also what we couldn't forget, he wishes the world, world peace, and he wishes everybody, every dad, a happy Father's Day. Thank you, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, you know what, when Kevin first came here, I was kind of jealous. I wanted to be the token black guy. <laughs> yeah. This is wet. But now I'm happy he's here, you know? Yeah. And he is perhaps the most gifted Look athlete at in MMA with an awe-inspiring vertical leap, a man who exudes confidence, started wrestling at the age of 10, winning a state championship in high school, two titles nationally. This guy is a very gifted wrestler, and now comes his opponent, Fyodor Emelianenko, the Pride Heavyweight Champion. Well, this song, I think, is one of the greatest entrance songs there is. I love this song. Yeah. Have you guys ever talked to Fedor before? Yeah, right. we've interviewed yeah, him. He's cool as hell, huh? Yeah, very yeah. nice guy. Cool Layman. is the word for it. Very yeah. calm, cool, yeah. and collected. Yeah. I really like this guy's personality. He's always got that little smirk on his face. He's always happy, yeah. you know? When I lost the banner leg, he, he looked at me, and I, and I felt better. He looked at me a little smirk, like, he like, just saying, I re read his mind, like, said, don't worry, you did good. You know, he gave me that look, and he just looked at me, like, he was proud of me still. Yeah. And it instantly made me feel good when all of us were back in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, today we're celebrating fathers all over the world, and Fyodor Emelianenko is the proud dad of a four-year-old daughter, Maria. Oh, congratulations. I want to tell D'Angelo Jackson. Look at the place, there's no fire! That's right, your son D'Angelo also yeah. back home yeah. watching Papa tonight. You know he watching, don't tell him too late, son. <laughs> now, Emelianenko went through a car accident recently. Uh, the other driver uh, failing to yield. Uh, there was a minor collision, but as you can see, Emelianenko is a machine, and he uh, was able to train almost right away. And there it is, the Pride Heavyweight Championship belt. And this guy really doesn't convey any emotion whatsoever. 
Wow, look at this place. And again, I say it, it it's on fire. The, the animation here in Japan is just unreal. Yeah. Randman has my coach in his corner. It's, it's pretty nice my coach to help Randman out. He wrapped his hands for him and helping him out in the corner. That's, that's right. That's good. We'll take care of him. Yeah. He's the excellent. I tell you, he changed my, my whole life around. He's like a father figure. I want to tell Colin Oyama, thank you. A very he's, respected trainer in MMA. Oh, yeah. It's more than training. It's like, it's like he's my father, man. Cool. So it's happy Father's Day for him, too. Uh, yeah, he don't have any kids. <laughs> but everybody on Team Oyama is his kids, you know? <laughs> you can feel the electricity throughout Saitama Super Arena. There is a fantastic shot of what is happening here tonight, and we are just moments away from the main event of Critical Countdown, the fourth and final quarterfinal bout between that man, the monster Kevin Randleman, and the Pride Heavyweight Champion, Fyodor Emelianenko. Wow, man, this is the fight that I'm nervous for. There's always a fight I'm really nervous for, but this is not going the distance. That's one thing we know for sure. Somebody's gonna get knocked out. What is going to happen? Randleman is a wrestler at Hammer, Hammer House, 33, 5'11", 228 pounds, 4 and 2 record in pride. He reminds me of a black Tito. <laughs> <laughs> Emelianenko is a Sambo Judo fighter from the Red Devil Fight Club. 27, 6'1", 237 pounds, undefeated in pride at 6 and 0. Oh, them's some odds. Look, look at Fader's eyes. I don't think that I saw Fader's eyes like this before. I think he has a lot of respect for Randleman. He didn't make any contact with Randleman eye to eye during the final instructions from the referee. That means he has nothing against him. That's correct, and this bout is underway. The final spot for final conflict in August is on the line. Man, Fedor looks way bigger than Randleman to me. Yeah, it is. They have whatever do they have? Uh... It's only about a wow, nine-pound weight advantage for Emelian Echo. There's a left by Jackson, or make that Randleman. Sorry, I have plenty of Jackson's in the side. takedown. And the takedown by Randleman. That's all right, all black folks look alike. No, no. <laughs> it's like you're in Japan, you know? Yeah. Everybody call me, uh, what's his name? Gary Goodrich. <laughs> if I could cuss right now. Randleman to the half guard, and there is a... Can Randleman take it around? Oh! Oh! oh, my gosh! Oh, right his head! head. Nice. He should oh, be to the head Oh, my now. God! Oh. It's like he's hearing you, boss. North-south position, unbelievable. We have the king of the slam sitting right beside us. And oh, Quentin Rampage just you've got to be amazed. But wow, talk about amazing. Amelia Nanko amazed. turns the tables quick. I am amazed. Kevin Randleman, see, that's why I said I wouldn't be on the black guy here. And he's upstaging me. Let that go, Randleman. Go to something else. Yeah, you got to go. talk about go. strong. Amelia Nanko able to take that slam and now in Should dominant position. Up. Hold on, his leg. He's and opportunity here to grind in some knees if he establishes Maybe. himself better. North South. Oh, here we go. There he is. Oh. And oh. it's go. over. And Amelia Anko. Good job. With the Kamura. He did a good slam, buddy. Wow. Forces Kevin Randleman to tap. And now the emotions will come forward. He should have stayed up with him a little longer, though. Yeah, I think so too, but you know, with the whole situation with his dad and everything, he couldn't train full power for this, of course. He had the luck, the range a lot. I mean, the funeral, and it's and look it at the sports be devastating. A minute 33 <laughs> seconds of the first Classic. round. Fyodor Emelianenko submits Kevin the Monster Randleman. And what an emotionally charged matchup it was. So many storylines, Quentin, with uh, Emelianenko having beaten Mark Coleman in the first round. Jackson, uh, Randleman having to come to the fight with the loss of his father weighing heavily on his mind. They can take a lot. They can take a lot of toll. Let's look at this. Look at the suplex here. I, right on his head. Suplex, Lance oh, oh, on his oh head. that's rampage style. Man, I never did anything like that. He should have started kneeing there right away. Right look away. at this. And look He's at that exchange of sportsmanship. That's it, man. That's what pride fighting is all about. Pride.
Pride, pride. People, they, they still love each other today. You bet they go to drink today. And that's today. what the Pride Heavyweight Champion is all about. He is the standard bearer of this company, Fyodor Emelianenko, and he is now on his way to final conflict in August. Kevin the Monster Randleman can now return home to his family and deal with what's more important in life, and that's going through the grieving process for his father. Yeah. Yep. Now let up. See, see what he does here. He's going to make the reverse figure four, putting his arms down, going underneath, grab the wrist, and that's it. It's over. A lot of strength. We know now that he can bomb, he can take out, he can escape takedowns, and he can submission. And he can take. And he can take slam. And he can take slam. Oh, what that was a slam. Yeah, that was a slam. I mean, it was a slam that you oh. did on Eagle Wolf Chat. You knocked him, you broke his ribs with it. Yeah, but he landed right on his neck. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's not hurt. Unbelievable. You talk about unbelievable, Boss Rudin. It's been an unbelievable night, a memorable night here at Saitama Super Arena. A record crowd of 43,711 in attendance. And now our Pride Heavyweight Champion will address the record crowd tonight. Uh-oh, there's his former teammate. They had to fight each other? He maybe. There's a good chance that they have to. Is there bad blood between the two? I don't know. We asked Now they've it. said there's nothing but mutual respect <laughs> between <laughs> them. I think it's uh, maybe the coaches <laughs> who have the, uh, <laughs> the so-called politics involved. But uh, his former coach, Mr. Yagudin, says he wishes him nothing but success. Those are some nice people. I like talked to him there and, 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 yeah. and, his, and the coach's yeah, wife got a nice you. butt, Thank nice you. and big. And so I like uh, to watch around them, hang around, and make sure they're okay, you know. <laughs> so they're nice people, you know. A fan of Sir mix a lot, I take it, there. Oh, oh, yeah. I cannot lie. Yeah, one more to put a zoo there. I smell lying in you, man. Anderson Goncalves in Brazil. I love you, man. See you soon. So he thanked the crowd for their uh, support tonight. He really appreciated it. And there you see uh, compatriot Sergei Heratanov. There's Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. He hopes that his performance tonight pleased the crowd, and you can tell by his the applause that he's receiving that that was the case. Well, so it sets up the final four at final conflict in August. It will be Sergei Heratonov. Yep. Hey, undefeated in pride. Undefeated. Undefeated. That's, 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 that sounds good. Yeah, that's a good sound to it, yeah. Naoya Ogawa, the Japanese hope. I was undefeated in my first fight. <laughs> Interim Pride Heavyweight Champion Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. James Centinello, thank you for the gym, man. You're a good man. Thanks, And James. there is Pride Heavyweight Champion Fyodor Emelianenko. And what kind of permutations do you see unfolding here, boss, with the final four? Can you imagine the, the riches of matchups that we could be seeing here, you guys, with so many sports uh, rivalries involved? And again, when you want more information on upcoming events and these four fighters and everyone in the Pride Fighting Championship roster, make sure you log on to pridefc.com. Who's all left? Is the Japanese guy left? The yeah, Naoya the Japanese Ogawa, guy left. Sergei Heratonov, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera, and Fyodor Emelianenko. We started the night with a successful return of Kazushi Sakuraba, getting the decision over Antonio Shembri and uh, attaining revenge for their fight. Uh, a while ago then came Quentin Rampage Jackson, my friend. You took care of Ricardo Arona, and that sets up a fight with the Pride middleweight champion. Again. And uh, Vanderlei Silva and Yuki Kondo will battle first, but uh, Quentin Jackson will definitely be in line for a title shot oh, is that down going the road. Down? Support the black man. Sergey Heratonov <laughs> defeated Sammy Schilt to advance Look at that to the final four. You know what? I would say, if I would choose, I would say let Fedor fight um, Ogawa, and then because uh, he already fought Nogueira, yeah. and then if they both, you know, they can fight each other again in the finals, that would be the thing that I would say. I'd like to see Fedor and Nogueira go at it, and Ogawa and Heratonov, and then let's see what happens from there. I agree with Boss. No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's the black man and the white man I right now. Not the Canadian guy. Yeah. 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 Right now. I like I like the Canadians. So what's up, Vancouver? Woo! Woo! 
I was there. You was there. They got beautiful girls, man. They still remember me. Susie Fee, hey girl. So there's your final four. Ogawa, Nogera, Hiratano, and Emelianenko. Being addressed by Pride official Nobuhiko Takata. That is going to be a night, man. Wow. Can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. And like I said before, I really see Haratana and Ogawa. I want to. Oh, no. Haratana. And, uh, Thank you. But that's what I see. Haratana and Ogawa. Haratana and Ogawa. I want to see him fight. And then I want to see Ogawa and the Fedor. What do you think of my job sitting here? Our job is sitting here ringside watching this thing, and yeah. it's a great job, isn't yeah. it? Am, am I getting paid? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ogawa no. now has the microphone. I can smell his breath from here. Oh, my hair is my hair is like my face. <laughs> What does he say? Now let me see. All right. Well, we uh, can tell you that Ogawa is just simply telling the fans that he is going to be a force to be reckoned with in final conflict. And the final four, once again, are Sergei Hamatanov, Naoya Ogawa, Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, and Fyodor Emelianenko. We want to thank and congratulate it. Quentin Rampage Jackson. Happy birthday. Bouquet the Slam. And we want to wish you all the best and hope to see you Sunday, July 25th Bukek for down. Bushido 4, Brazilian <laughs> top team versus Team Bide. Japan. And then final conflict on Sunday, August 22nd, only on pay-per-view. For man. Rampage, for El Wapo, this is Moro saying goodnight from Saitama Super Arena.